Yeah, what I found is a family and a school on opposite sides, and at the center of it all is a young girl who just had her 12th birthday. And because she is a possible victim of sexual harassment, we are not going to show you her face. We're not going to use her name or even her parents' names. But I am going to let you hear her words because I think it's important for you to hear directly from her, even though we have disguised her voice. Now, I've talked to a lot of people to get to the bottom of this. Most of them did not want to be interviewed on camera, but between court documents and conversations with both the family and the school, here's where it stands right now. It's kind of a shame that it came to this. It's definitely not the kind of case civil attorney Matt Albrecht is used to, but he says he took it on for one reason. Children shouldn't have to be going to school scared. So his newest client is a 12-year-old girl who's been a student at Northwest Christian School in Colbert for the last two years. Let's call her A. She says she likes her school and her friends, except for two boys who she says have been harassing her. We'll call them boy one and boy two. Boy one, she says, has been picking on her since last year. He dropped books on my head and slammed my hand in the locker and hid like, my stuff from my backpack around the classroom. Then, at the end of March, she says boy two touched her inappropriately in the middle of choir class when the lights were turned off as the sixth graders were watching The Sound of Music. When I sat down with her at Albrecht's law office, her mom sat with us and gave a permission to tell me what happened. Boy two put his foot on my uh, knee and inner thigh area and it was moving it up and down approximately 10 times and I told him to stop and I smacked his foot away. And then what? Um, after class I told my next class's teacher. And then what did she say? She said that she'll talk to him. And do you know if she did? No. Did anything happen? No. Did anyone from the school ever come to you to try and understand more about what happened? No. A few weeks later, A says the same boy, too, approached her again when they were alone behind the drama stage. So her family asked the sheriff's office to investigate and also filed for a protection order against both boys. In that court petition, A says boy two asked her to take a ride in his white van with tinted windows, then made sexual gestures at her. A stated she was scared and left to tell a teacher. She says that teacher then told boy two to stay away from the girls. Now court declarations from the boy's family shows he denies all of it, saying he never touched her thigh, didn't say anything about a white van, and didn't make sexual gestures. He goes on to say that what A has been saying about him makes him nervous and scared, and that he now has nightmares about going to jail. Then on April 11th, just after spring break, A texted her mom from class to come get her. That would end up being her last day of school at Northwest Christian. Okay, so we're going to come back to that here in just a moment. In the meantime, the family says they tried to have sit-down meetings with school administrators and the boys' parents, but they tell me the school wouldn't set it up. So that's when they decided to pursue those protection orders against boy one and boy two. And just last week, there was a hearing, and a judge in Spokane Superior Court listened to testimony from both sides and then granted those protection orders for one year. That means those boys are not allowed to have any contact with A of any kind. But today was one of the good days where you get to see a court step in as the last resort. Albrecht tells me the family wanted to resolve the issue without going to court, while Northwest Christian insists it did nothing wrong. In fact, school administrators say A's mom has sparked such a controversy online that some parents felt threatened by her behavior and her statements. It caused the school to activate a modified lockdown one day in early May. School administrators didn't want to speak on camera, but sent me this statement saying our primary objective is to create a safe and nurturing learning environment. They tell me in this particular incident between A and boy two, they followed their student handbook regarding bullying and harassment. So I asked for a copy of that school policy. It reads bullying is never acceptable and that staff are committed to prevent bullying and mentor students while holding them accountable for their actions. It adds that students and parents are encouraged to report problems to teachers or administrators and that any harassment will result in major disciplinary action. So I asked school officials if they think they did enough after that initial claim of harassment in the choir classroom and to that they said no comment. 
So then I asked if A could come back to school so she could finish out the year. Remember when we said that her last day was on April 11th? Well, school administrators tell me that A's mom indicated on several occasions online and in person that she wouldn't be coming back, so they withdrew her. But A's mom tells me she never actually completed the official withdrawal paperwork. And if you see here, she sent me a copy of that paperwork. It was never signed or submitted, so she believes that A should still be considered a student. Do you still want to go to school there? Yeah. You do? How come? Well, now I know that they are going to get off my back. Yeah. It will be like I have this space to learn, to go to school like a normal kid should, and like be able to go there without being messed with. In this declaration to the court, A says she doesn't want to be in a room alone with Boy 2 and that what the school has done so far has not stopped him. But she stated she does want to come back to school with her friends. However, an email from the school's attorney says since A is no longer a student at Northwest Christian, she and her family are not allowed to enter the campus. So I asked the school, is that standard procedure for all families who stop attending there or just A and her family? To that, the school again said no comment. There is a, there is a sense of secrecy that is really disappointing. What do you think the school should have done? Well, first, if there's a dark theater and a young girl has had a boy rubbing part of his body against her thigh after she's saying stop it, um, it is astonishing to me that the first phone call is not to that girl's parents. Do you think in their mind it was just kids being kids? Well, not just in their minds, but that's almost the exact words of the detective who investigated. That This is more than that. This, this was growing to a point where it's unacceptable. And If you were in a workplace, mm -hmm. would it be okay for somebody to do these things to you? And if it's not, why are we not teaching our children that they should give each other the same respect each one of us would ask for? So I did talk to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office. I'm told the investigation is still ongoing, but at this point it doesn't seem like any of the possible actions from the boys would rise to the level of a crime. As of right now, A is being homeschooled. Northwest Christian says she is welcome to reapply for admission in the fall, but when I asked if there was any way for her to come back for these last few weeks of school, I was told no, that her status as a student is going to stay as withdrawn. Here in the newsroom tonight, Whitney Ward, Crem 2 News.